What's up guys? In today's video we're going to be making a ring that honestly feels like it was a match made in heaven. On my left hand here this is rose gold and then on my right this is superconductor. And you can see they are very similar color options. The rose gold is obviously a lot more premium, it's not going to oxidize or cause any issues. So I'm going to put that on the inside of the ring where it contacts your finger. That way we don't have any issues with your ring turning green, anything like that. And then the superconductor itself, this is a different type from what I usually use. It's more of a premium pattern. It's got a lot smaller filaments in it and a lot more of them. And so it's going to be more of a refined look. It's going to have a lot of just the stripes across it. And so this is going to be a really interesting ring and one that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. It's just obviously expensive and kind of tricky to get a hold of rose gold or just any gold for that matter for your ring. So you guys get the general idea of the ring. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to get started. So my first step is going to be cutting a slice of superconductor off of the rod and you'll see I'm measuring it up with the ring blank there. That's just to be sure that I'm not cutting off any excess because this material is just so expensive and I don't want to waste any of it. Now my next step is going to be drilling a hole out through the center of the blank and so to do that I'm going to use a center drill and that just gets the hole started, it punches it all the way through and then I switch over to the boring bar and that's what allows me to widen it up to the size that will actually eventually fit that rose gold liner inside of it. Now before I add the liner, I wanted to trim down the outside of it and even out the blank. And so I'm switching it over to my expanding ring mandrel and I'm just slowly trimming away that outer diameter and getting it to the point where it's within a few millimeters of the final outer diameter that the ring will actually be. Now I'm using my lathe bit to even out the edges of the ring and make sure that both of the sides are perfectly parallel to each other. Now I've got both components of the ring just about ready to mate together, but before I do that I need to widen out the inside of the superconductor just a little bit more. I want to have it be a very precise fit so that I can have a press fit, and that's when the materials don't quite fit together, and so you have to hammer them together. That makes it much more secure of a bond, that way the ring won't ever fall apart. And so to do that, I'm just very, very carefully hollowing out the inside of the superconductor. And I can't stress how important this step is. If you go just a fraction of a fraction of a millimeter too far here, it's going to be a loose fit that does not work very well. And that's not the end of the world. You still can epoxy it together and have a good tight bond, but it is always better to do a press fit. And so I was able to get it exactly how I wanted and you'll see how that works. And so you want it to be able to just barely fit into each other, the rose gold. I can get it to go in about three millimeters, I'd say. And beyond that point, it's really hard to do. And so that's just perfect for a press fit because I can get it started. And then from here, I just need to hammer it in there and the materials are just gonna wedge themselves together. And like I said, it's just going to be a very permanent bond that's going to hold together very well. And then as an additional measure of security here, I'm putting the whole entire assembly onto this ring mandrel. And you can see it's got a cone shape to it. So that way when I hammer it downwards, it's going to flare the ends of the rose gold out. That'll just wedge it in there even tighter. And then as a third and final way of securing these pieces together, this is going to be a very secure fit between the ring. I'm using just ultra thin CA adhesive for this. And this is such a thin liquid that it actually uses capillary action to sink into to any just open pores that this has and so I just put a dab on there and it just soaks into any of the cracks and so that's just like I said just a third and final measure to make sure that this thing is super secure and never going to fall apart. 
And what you see me doing here is just sanding everything flush. You could see that the superconductor was just a teeny bit wider than the rose gold. And so I'm sanding away any of that excess and that'll leave us with a perfectly flush, ready to go blank that we can do all of our finishing touches to. Now it's time to trim everything down and get it to the actual final dimensions that I want. And so I'm just very carefully trimming it away. And one thing to note here is because this is a composite material where we've got the superconductor infused with the copper here, you can have issues where the superconductor itself will kind of smear into the copper. And that's just because the copper is malleable and allows the superconductor to do that. And so you wanna be very careful on the final passes you do with your lathe bit. I wanna make sure that I'm using a very sharp bit that's just literally brand new. And then I wanna take very shallow passes. That way I'm just getting a very clean cut that's not going to leave as much smearing. And then I did a good amount of sanding. And that was before I added the bevels to the ring. And that's because I want to sand it away without rounding out the bevels because I still wanna have nice, crisp, sharp angles on those bevels, but I wanna get rid of all of the smearing that I can. And so that's why you see me do it in the steps that I did. That's just to make sure that the ring overall when we're done is going to have a minimal amount of smearing and will have the cleanest, sharpest, most professional look to it. And as you just saw, I added bevels to the ring. And to do that, I just used the angled side of my lathe bit and I just carefully by hand put those bevels in. And I was just being very careful to make sure that both sides were even. Now it's time to switch over to the inside of the ring and I'm finally beginning work on the rose gold. And this is gonna be a lot of fun. We're going to be able to take this from just the harsh factory finish that the rose gold liner came with. And we're going to give it a beautiful, rounded and perfectly polished finish. And so to start off, I'm using my Dremel with a fine sandpaper to round out the inside. That'll make it very comfortable to wear. And then I'm just going through all my different grits of sandpaper. So I start at 220, I work my way up. I usually have about 200 to 400 space between all my grits. So I go from 220, then I go to 400, 600, 800, 1200, 1500, even up to 2000. So at that point, the ring is perfectly smooth, but it's not reflective. And so to get that shine on there, I need to use a polish. And so my first step is going to be a medium polish. That's going to get rid of any irregularities. It's going to completely smoothen out the material. But to get that mirror polish, I need to switch over to a finer grit polish. And so that'll bring out just that perfect mirror finish that you'll see that we're left with here at the end. And here's the inside of the ring finished. And you can see just how nice this turned out. It's just a perfectly reflective inside mirror finish. And what's great about this rose gold is that it's not going to corrode or have any issues. It's just gonna stay like this for years and years. Now to finish the outside of the ring, I'm going to use the same exact methods. I'm using a medium polish on the left and a super fine polish on the right. Now, once I'm done polishing this, I'm going to show it off to you guys, show you the final results that this gave us, but then I'm going to switch it over and put it in some acid, and we're going to try out a secondary finish on this ring that I think you guys are really gonna like. So here's the ring all polished up and finished, and I just think it looks so beautiful. The rose gold just has a perfect finish on it, and the superconductor as well, it just looks really good with this nice polish on it. And then that superconductor pattern, it's super interesting, it looks incredible, and it's just such a cool, rare material to be able to wear on your finger at all times. So I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. But like I said, I'm going to put another finish on this ring, and so to do that, we're going to dissolve away some of the copper in the superconductor portion of this ring. And so to do that, I'm putting it in muriatic acid with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. That's to speed up the reaction. And that's going to etch away some of the copper in the ring. And I'm just going to do a very subtle etching. That way it'll give us a little bit of texture and kind of differentiate the copper from the superconductor in the ring, make it look a little bit more interesting. But I'm not going to go too far. I just wanna keep it fairly subtle for this. And one thing that I was worried about was the fact that we're putting this rose gold in the acid as well. And if you didn't know, rose gold gets its color from having copper into it. 
and so we're putting this ring into an acid that's designed to eat away copper and so it's kind of a scary thing but in reality the gold itself is actually a noble enough material that when you mix it with copper at least in the proportions that we have here which is about 25 percent if you didn't know for rose gold it's actually able to protect that copper completely. So you can see it literally, it didn't even tarnish the ring at all. I didn't even have to polish it once we were done. But the copper was kind of a different story. The acid does leave a tarnish on it. So to get rid of that, I threw it into a second liquid and that's just regular distilled vinegar that you can buy in the store. And then I just put table salt into that. And in about 30 seconds, that completely shines up the copper and makes it look brand new. So that's a really handy trick if you've got one of these rings of what you can do to just bring that copper back to its original shine. So that's the ring guys. I really hope you liked this video. This was such an amazing ring for me to make. It was a lot of fun and I love working with gold and superconductor. And so just to be able to combine the two was such a fun experience. And I hope you guys liked it as well. If you enjoyed the video, you can give it a like. Of course, you can subscribe to my channel if you wanna see my future videos. And then as always, I've got links down to everything down in the description. We are probably going to be doing a limited edition release of this ring. And so you can check that out. There's a link to that down in the description. And of course, I've got my Instagram, everything like that. That's down in the description. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next week.